What's up everybody, Direct back at it again with another video. This is honestly going to be the last what we know video that I do until we get more information because I'm kind of getting tired of just like getting scraps and putting it together. I think I am going to do at least one more speculation video. I'm not sure when I'm going to have that out, but I'm going to do it at some point. So let's get into the video. So first we're going to be talking about the Ready or Not Community Podcast. It's sponsored by the devs and sometimes I like to come on there. We talk about a lot of things like what could be in the game or what we would like to see in the game. I actually have a copy of the original first podcast that we had actually done, but it wasn't actually released because they said that it was not as structured as the newest one that we have. And it's really too bad because Royans was the one that was actually in it. Those of you that don't know who Royans is, he's the original creator behind Ready or Not. He's one of the original three that started the game. So uh, I guess I'll just play a snippet of it. And if you guys want me to release the full version, then uh, I guess I'll do it at some point. So here we go. Yo, Ryan, what are your general, uh, what are your thoughts on people comparing Siege to Ready or Not? Um, I mean, that's going to be a natural comparison because a lot of people have played Siege and not as many people have played SWAT, I'd argue. But, um, I think that's, that's fine. Um, they're different games, but, you know, if you depends what you're playing Siege for, right? If you're playing it because you like playing as police, you know, then fine, you're going to like every game that comes out in this like police game. But if you're playing it because, you know, you want a competitive multiplayer game, well, then you're, you're probably looking in, you know, the wrong place. You know, there's still competitive multiplayer aspect, but it's not the focus. Yeah, that's that's true as well. I agree with that. It depends on but, what you play. Uh, yeah. Um, like, people that have played, you know, SWAT and then you know, they kind of played that for so many years and then they've moved on to Siege, you know, they're probably pretty keen to jump right back in, surely. Because uh, I'm not a big fan of people just comparing it to that because to me it just seems like they're two different games. People mm. that just do it, I guess, cussed up. I mean, yeah. I guess. Um, like, they follow two different yeah. sets of rules. Yeah. And... I mean, that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's about managing their expectations, I guess. They come in expecting Siege, but then they're not going to, you know, that. Yeah, because I had a conversation with, with a person on my channel saying that he was he was saying that Siege basically goes back to its roots with Rainbow Six Three or whatever, and I'm just like, I don't know, I haven't played that one. <laughs> <laughs> Say, do that. Like, huh? I know you made a trailer as well, but Bobby wasn't in it. Uh, what do you want in the trailer? I don't know. Uh, gameplay. <laughs> Things we haven't seen be a good one, mate. That would be really a good one. Just things you haven't seen. As I've said, you know... Oh, wait, what the... Uh, like honestly, if it, was, if it was entirely up to me, I would have, you know, I would have probably showed gameplay, um, you know, a while ago, but... I think they would have an introduction. For I'm, I've, like... I've, been, I've been, you know, keen, keen to show you guys, but um, you get, get excited. That's, that's all I can say. Yay. And that was a snippet of the Lost Podcast. If any of you would like to listen to the first official podcast, the link is in the description. We do podcasts every Saturday at 2pm Eastern. And the best part about it, anyone can join. Even you. And that's all I had to say about that. So let's push on to the next one. So over in the Ready or Not Discord, a voice actor actually spoke out. He said something like, Hi everyone, after the game releases I'd be happy to speak on the podcast if you'd like. I'm a voice actor that has provided some work for the game. The dialogue is superb, and also great fun to perform, but obviously I can't talk too much at this point. I'm sworn to secrecy at this point. I've signed an NDA that prohibits me from speaking about specifics before the game trailer releases, but once it is, I'll be happy to give some insight into my contributions. So I actually know what voice this guy is, because if we go back to that one Twitter post that's on Void Interactive's Twitter, it was asking for voice actors, which I myself covered in a previous video, and thought I'd throw my voice into the ring, which you can watch here if you're interested. But we have his voice right here. Stop right there, motherfucker. You are under arrest. Put your hands up where I can see them. Put the gun down. There's no getting out of this one. If you don't put the gun down, I am going to blow your head off. There was also a person in the Discord that had said that he was a voice actor too for the game, but I couldn't find his voice on the acting page. So I'm not sure if he's lying or if he was being real. But when I was looking, I had actually found that one guy, Barricade. Barricade is that one guy that had said would be a really good voice actor if he had actually voice acted. And, funnily enough, this is his voice. Stop right there, motherfucker. You're under arrest. Put your hands up where I can see him. 
So it's blatantly obvious to me that Void Interactive is hiring some pretty good voices, but uh, how is the voice acting going to be, I wonder? Like, what type of dialogue are we going to be listening to when we actually get into the game? All these questions and no freaking answers. But I digress, I guess. Let's move on to the next one. So over on their Twitter, they actually became more active recently, and I'm actually kind of surprised, but the thing is, is that it's not really newsworthy. It's more of like a retweeting of a fan post. It says here, from a Captain Crunch, my buddy and I got pictures of our modern Mandalorian airsoft gear and decided to do some edits for our airsoft team. We decided to make a mock-up of the artwork for Void Interactive's game, ready or not. Photo credit to Madonia, photography on Instagram, Facebook, and they show like, a picture of them in their gear and they're kind of posing for like the ready or not sort of deal. This isn't the first time they've actually done this. They've done this with Insurgency Sandstorm too, which I think is pretty cool but it's not really newsworthy but I just thought that I would put it in as like a side note. So uh, there's that. Alright, let's move on to uh, Reddit, I guess. I want to be sure to tell everyone that if you want to post on the Reddit, be sure to read the FAQ because maybe it already has an answer to some of your questions. Link in the description. So first we're going to be starting with a question that I asked but it was actually from a commenter that was on my video it goes as follows will contacts actually work like in real life maybe I didn't look hard enough at the FAQ so I apologize if it's been answered but my question is will contacts in game nullify loud sounds like gunshots and explosions and amplify small sounds like footsteps and voices or is it more of an accessory either way I would still like to know keep up the good work void the developer replies with I've touched on this before but contacts don't have a real function like they do in real life. They're just cosmetic. Also, the default SWAT run Liberators. The image you see of the officers in the current banner, for example, are an old character model we don't use anymore. Somebody replies to him quoting what he just said right there, saying, we don't use anymore? Aw, almost sad we won't see them. If you ever make an in-game museum though, like in Bioshock or Modern Warfare 2, you should hella include them so they're immortalized. And the developer replies with, they're used just with other units. So they're still in the game but they're being used by other units what are the other units does that mean the paramilitary forces using them yeah. later on in the comment section somebody says that's a big sad from me almost as much as sad as the trailer delays but you got to do the blueprints and the developer replies with i mean ultimately you won't have much of a frame reference there's no option to go in without ear pro so i could have said just as much that they do amplify sound and make gunshots more tolerable and you never know the difference when playing later on in the comment section somebody says can you link a picture of an officer that wears kind of the gear that we will see in the game and the developer replies with sure this is the kit you'll be running with in the base game and it has a picture of a SWAT gear it looks like that was from the Instagram post from a while ago and the developer continues it's one of the variations of the uniform at least later on in the comment section somebody asks SWAT uses standard issue uniforms the helmet is a part of that uniform this isn't a mercenary fantasy game where every person in a squad has has a different helmet on with a different uniform and different accent cough siege and the developer replies with this is the helmet that the SWAT get there are variations of it an up armored one etc but nothing different they all use the same base if there are more helmets added they'll be a part of a different unit's overall look and you won't be able to swap between helmets unless we think it's useful to do so so that was a lot of stuff that people were talking about on this one comment that I posted so that was that was pretty interesting let's move on to the next one up next we got can lethal weapons incapacitate. Did not see anything on the FAQ on this topic. Sorry if I missed it. Will there be cases where you engage a suspect with a lethal weapon and not kill them in the exchange, but the suspect is unable to continue the fight or loses the will to attack? For example, a suspect in a bullet resistant helmet being knocked unconscious, suspect's arm crippled, or they take a few rounds and surrender. Will there be a penalty for killing the suspect if these situations are possible? And the developer replies with, if you hit them in the right places, you sure can. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, they had that in swap 4 where if you like shot them in the leg they would immediately surrender um and it's kind of cool to see them make a return all right let's move on to the next one different arresting positions i was curious to know if there was any other positions of surrender that ai suspect and hostage will take besides the standard kneeling and hands up i watched enough police body cam footage to know that the position where most suspects are actually cuffed is laying prone faces in the ground will we be seeing different positions that suspects and hostages move to once instructed by the player to 
to surrender. So maybe some AI will kneel and others will lay face down with arms out. Also, will we be able to cuff neutralized dead suspects? This is the Sanders SWAT procedure after clearing a room. I was thinking maybe you'd have to cuff dead or neutralized suspect body before Talk will send a team to recover them. And the developer replies with, right now we don't have that, but it's definitely in the plan. Customizing? Wait, could you customize the way that you cuff someone? That's actually kind of interesting. Huh. Customizing, but he has it like cut out. Cuffing neutralizer dead suspect probably won't happen. Oh, well, as I read that. <laughs> Since that's quite hard to do with ragdolls. Oh uh, yeah, that's kind of true actually. Maybe though, that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be cool. Later on in the comments, somebody says, customizing, did you mean cuffing? Am I a brainlet or does OP not mention anything about customization? And the developer replies with, oops, yeah, cuffing. I can't tell if he's joking here, cause it seems like, I mean, I know that the devs like to joke a lot and sometimes I misinterpret it because you know, uh, unless I'm actually seeing them like face to face then I can't really tell. So uh, is he is he trying to tell us something that there's customizing or is he just playing with us? I can't tell. Well, that's interesting enough. I think we're gonna push on to the next one, which says, is there any suppression effect system in development? Hmm. I wonder, that's, that's a pretty interesting idea. Cause I mean, in Hell Let Loose, there is a suppression system. So that would be cool to add it into this game, but it's not like you're in the middle of a, well, I don't know. It's an interesting concept. But anyways, a returning fire visual punishment would be very important to give teammates the possibility to advance. And the developer replies with, yes, there is a suppression effect in the game. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I have to wonder what it's gonna be like because I mean in Hell Let Loose there is this like your screen completely turns gray and you're essentially like you're like you're shaking around so much yeah I mean I mean you're looking at it right now but yeah uh, let's move on to the next one is this game still gonna happen I mean the devs went mute while they were pretty chill and confident before like what is even happening with the game is it delayed or what and the developer replies with we're all working hard still confident too. We're making sure that everything is as perfect as we can possibly achieve. So it takes time. Yeah, sure does. All right, let's move on to the next one. Only in my opinion, the first reload is a bit too fast. And then it just shows the video of uh, the one video where he's standing inside of like a gas station, I think that is. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it, it looks fine to me. I mean, I think the problem with most tactical games is that they're, the reloading is way too freaking slow. Like, where's the sense of urgency? Like, you're in the middle of a firefight and you're trying to reload. Eh, it looks fine to me, but, you know, you could disagree with me. That's fine by me. But let's see what he has to say. So I guess I'm going to start with this comment right here. It says, yes, he retrieved that Mac from a pouch like Grease lightning and then somebody replies to him saying if someone has open top pouches or holders it's not that difficult to drop a mag and have another one out fairly quickly and the developer replies with exactly they're reloading from open top pouches and all of this is matched to an actual person doing it so the reload is one one with one in real life i played a lot of tactical games now and one thing that i've noticed about every single one of them is that this when it comes to reloading it takes them fucking forever i'm in the middle of a firefight please the sense of urgency he's like he takes out the mag and he's like taps his fucking gun or he fucking takes forever to fucking load it's it's really annoying so i'm kind of glad that this is like that so i mean uh love it or hate it i think i like it better if i'm being real up next we have main menu ui design hey fellas first post to reddit here but been following the game for about a year felt like asking this question seeing as i haven't seen it mentioned anywhere on the faq nowhere as before this i was wondering what the intentions for the end design of the main menu ui would look like perhaps going for something like an animated menu a la most source games and squad or a static image or perhaps even more animated animated screens, depending on the tab you open. Settings display something different than single player, etc. Will there be a beta menu UI placeholder or is it intended to be completed by that stage? That's all I had to ask, really. Good luck with the game, guys. And the developer replies with, we've been putting a lot of work into the design of our UI. It's quite different from what most would expect from a tactical shooter, but hopefully people will enjoy its aesthetic. Later on in the comments, somebody says, as long as it is quick and it has a lot of info on the page, that is really what matters. Not a fan of flashy menus that have you opening and closing dozens of tabs or switching effects that take half a second to load 
The idea is to keep it as to the point as possible, while still retaining a unique style. I'm not a huge fan of floaty, modern UI menus that don't convey much about the game or match its time period. You can explore a lot of game themes through menus, so we're putting a lot of focus on that, while still putting a lot of usability on the forefront. Interesting. Later on in the comments, somebody says, Can we get a main menu music preview? And the developer replies with, You wish. Wait till the trailer. Moving on to the next one. Up next we have, Will the weapon customization include rail changing? Will the weapon customize include the rail changing? Will there be various types of rails for weapons such as AR? That has a big amount of different aftermarket rails. Mo, M-Lock, Key Mod, or even without the triangle sight, different inches. Can the weapon attachments be movable? Choosing which part of the rail you wanted to mount the sights or attachments. Haven't seen a game with this kind of deep customization for a gun. Multi just mounted sights in the same spot. Just a thought. Please don't mind my basic English. Fair enough. And the developer replies with, Right now our focus is on aesthetic changes like modifying rail systems etc. It's pretty minimal unless you've accessed a new skin. Open attachments aren't movable. Ground Branch has a fantastic version of this and it's quite surprising how far you can push it, but it's not going to be the focus of our title. Optics will be pre-designed based on wherever they're most useful. Alright, moving on. Up next we have red dots. Whenever I use a red dot, I keep both eyes open. Stereo vision makes the casing of the dot be just barely visible, blurring the sight picture. Will this be the way that it's implemented in game or will it be the classic one eye aiming block half the screen with the red dot casing a person in the comment posts a video about how this actually works in real life but the developer applies with this is a good video if you're not using the unreal engine you can't just go around having transparent stuff like this in certain engines because it's either super expensive or it just doesn't work as you would expect this video is a pretty great example you could do this to some capacity but what you'd end up with is a transparent model with all the geometry inside also being slightly visible there is no sight layer that exists in UE4 since it uses different rendering method by default. Interesting, moving on. Will the cuff suspect taunt players if the team got shot or things gone wrong? If not, it's okay. I don't want to get a delay, lol. When you play SWAT, after you cuff the suspect, they're just mumbling about something and your team reply only once. So I thought, what if the cuff suspect taunted us if we got shot? The idea is in the mission. I reached room near cuff suspect and it didn't go well. One of my team got shot. I look at the cuff suspect and think, what if they taunt the SWAT unit? Say, ha, that's what you get you son of a bitch or if it's a cult mission it's like this is what happens when you interrupt the lord's plan or whatever i think it would be cool to test the player's will to piss them off the sus can keep taunting what are you gonna do shoot me what i thought you were all good at what you do you just piece of shit. And the player can probably reply back with pepper spray or tase, which can also have a potential of a lost point. And the developer replies with, there are plenty of taunts from certain suspects for all sorts of situations. That's pretty cool sounding, I'll be honest. All right, moving on. Can we please get some type of update? The one thing that I find very interesting about this post is that it's locked. I don't think I've ever seen a post that's ever been locked before, but uh, I'll continue reading. It says, I have no doubt that Void is legit living in the office and ordering Chinese take out trying to get this trailer out but we currently do not know what is going on besides the fact that they are working on it did something happen is this game still set for november did the investor pull out i feel that some type of update would be great easy street replies with hi the previous statement was that we would delay the trailer a month or two but no more than three and this is still the case we're currently on month two of said delay nothing has changed we're still pushing hard to make sure that the trailer is out so the guy that's commenting is easy street and this is the guy that had said previously that it was supposed to come out in august but the problem is that the original devs never actually told him officially when the trailer was supposed to come out so the august was actually misinformation and he's trying to make up for this here. This was actually said by a dev not too long ago, back in July. I believe it was sent by Gunter or Royans. It was one of those two, but yeah, he's right about this. They said a month or two, but no more than three. So that means that it could be within the three months, meaning that it could be from August, September, or October. So here's what I think is going to happen. At the end of September, we're going to see that small thing that Easy Street was hinting at. Sometime in October, we're going to see the trailer. And in November, we're going to see the release of the game. Or at least that's just what I think. Take this all as a grain of salt because things are bound to change. And with that, that ends our full what we know video. So I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.